Our guys, our guest this week is the host of my favorite podcast. <laughs> I'm so excited. And lately, you know, like, so we do this podcast, and Kasim's like, I do a podcast with my best friend, and he means me. And Jamie's like, I do a podcast with my best friend, and she means me. And then they tried to make me decide. They're like, who's your best friend? Yeah, you have to That's choose why we sit one. Here. And then I said, what? you know, you know who I say? Really <gasps> I say Christina P is my no! best friend. Yeah, Christina P is my best friend now. He talks so about you excited. a lot. I love it. He's like, hey, dude, Christina P just texted me this morning. She sent me this video. <laughs> yeah. It's this guy fucking swallowing his own nutsack. But yeah, dude, <laughs> love that girl. Well, I'm like, you want to see something? Yeah, can I tell you that our friendship, soon you and I will be friends too. Yeah, but no, it's with happening. Before Jamie your eyes. and Rob, you guys are my new best friends. Mm. And I, I feel like, I don't know, I feel an instant connection to you two in a weird way. And I've been doing Pajitsky effects now on where my mom's at, and I give you full credit. Thank you. It's a huge thing. I don't know if you've ever done this in your life where you upgrade something you've been doing wrong. Like, for instance, <laughs> mm -hmm. I would only use one towel for my body and my hair. Yeah. Now I use two. And like, you would barely use it. And right? I barely, yeah, I would stay wet and then put my pants That's on. That's like says something about how you felt about yourself. A hundred percent. now yeah. that you're doing that, you probably, your self-esteem's like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's good uh, for you. It's so true. Good it's a decade you. in therapy and now I use two You're towels. a two towel yeah. person, huh? <laughs> yeah, fancy. That yeah, must be nice. When yeah. I wash my hair, I'm a two towel for sure. Really? Yeah. Hell yeah. Wow. So you, well, you I have were a hair born. towel. Yeah, I don't, like a turby twist. I've heard of these. Uh, not quite, but it's like but it's a twist. different absorbency for hair. There's nothing I hate more than like wet hair. It's the worst. So when I take it, it takes a little bit of that, you know, the yeah. excess water out. I hear you. Bro. I'll send you a link. I would love that. Okay. Thank you, best friends. Yes. And then, and then the other I thing was you. on your. Uh, <laughs> I was watching, because I, I send you videos all the time, and then yes. I'm watching, it's like Wednesday, right when it comes out, I'm like, oh, watch your mom's house. And I'm watching, and they're like, Rob Eiler sent us this clip today. I was like, oh my oh. God, they're yeah. I, I loved the it. The best. Yeah, that, that, what was that video, N Hadan Khan? I don't remember now. If every every day, it's guys shitting their balls out. So yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's a blur. <laughs> no, but like the burn victim uh, video, where they're like, it's you're like, who is this video for? <laughs> <laughs> where they're at the dinner and she's like, we don't want to look I, like you. I, <laughs> yeah. Oh, darn man. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. sent Tom on a rage spiral. Yeah. About, I don't know if you've seen these. They're like morality plays. Saw, saw your episode where you, you featured it. Dude, I, it blew my mind. Yeah, but my husband spent like a half an hour on it because he's so <laughs> enraged. And yeah. I don't want to spoil anything, but we will address Darman in an upcoming YMH. We're going to do something big. Yeah, yeah, you have it's to. It's terrible, though. I mean, who the hell is the demographic? Is it for, like, TikToks? You know what I mean? Or for, like, can I say that on the show? You could say whatever you want on the yeah. show. <laughs> Do you guys curse here mm -hmm. a little bit? Okay. Whatever you, literally whatever you want. This, okay. the, this... We also like to say like. I yeah. say like a lot, too. Uh, yeah. The show so has a, a Great. pre- Great. You're with your people. YMH and a post YMH period now. <laughs> and it's like, ever since they were- on the show, yeah. anyone who engages with us, whether it's like on Instagram or an email, it's it's like a completely different language. It's, <laughs> yes, it used to say like, hey, right. Rob, Cass, and uh, Jamie, what's going on now? It's like, hey, Hitlers. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, you're you know? in, you're But in. see, he sees it as a different language. I don't even notice that it's different <laughs> right. because I'm so used to like that vibe, you know? How cool yeah. is it that you have a whole like subculture mm -hmm. of mommies and they all you guys all speak this unique language you've been able to like carve out this like very gross section of the yeah. podcast yeah. world yeah. yeah it's so we were just talking about it on the way in. It's, it's like bananas. unlike any other we're talking about your live show oh, specifically it's too crazy yeah we just started doing those because youtube as you guys know censors oh, yeah, what we you know. can do yeah. and it kind of sucks cuz i mean the whole premise of the show is that my husband and i are two married comics so we have a naturally wacky dialogue at home so it started with like Gigi Allen like you've ever seen this guy shove a banana in his yeah. ass Tom and he was like yeah <laughs> and then we started talking about it and it was just from there like the weird yeah. stuff and the language is like it just brings me so much joy that so many people participate in utter nonsense yeah because I think the world now more than ever needs nonsense yeah. hardcore yes. fucking dumb shit like I think Rob and I we get excited about stupid shit like like bad videos i got really excited to meet pierce paris the guy that shits his own balls out and right yeah yeah yeah. like it's the little things of life i showed jamie that video yeah had it and, did. and oh yeah. i she didn't I, know it was balls you know, I spent, it was so <laughs> hazy i couldn't remember if i watched it when i was with you guys or you sent it to me and then i asked i was wondering if 
if that's just some a common thing that happens to all men when they <laughs> yeah, that's it. it made me very <laughs> self conscious about my sack, my own sack. Can um, you do it? No. Do you think you could oh stretch? Oh my god! No Are you kidding? Way. That no guy, way. You act like you. You're that like, guy's we've ball tried. Bag is no, yeah, yeah. No, I know not even to. Tr- you just look and no, no one would try with mine. <laughs> There's zero. <laughs> Yours are too high and tight. Yeah, and you know what? You're also kind of like uh, Nicki Minaj or Cardi B. <laughs> like when you show up somewhere, people want to know what wig you're gonna wear now. <laughs> Yeah. You know, they're like, oh, they're so interested in what yeah. you're gonna, what look you're bringing sure. to the show. Can you sure. tell us the look you're bringing today? Well, today is called. Uh, <laughs> actually, I did. That's so funny. Yes. I, I actually did have a look today. This is L.A. Girl. I'm positive L.A. vibing because I feel like yeah. L.A.'s got bad vibes right now. Wow. And Terrible hey, man, vibes. I'm eight one eight till I die in my heart. For real yeah. though, I'm an eight oh five er. I'm eight one eight right now. You're eight one eight. You are. What's I'm your original? Two. For, forever. That's oh. that's New York. New York City, yeah. Yeah. The city proper, not Brooklyn. Brooklyn is no, seven Manhattan. four seven. Yeah, I know seven one eight is Queens. Brooklyn, I think Brooklyn <laughs> says when I was young, Brooklyn was seven one eight. I don't know what it is now. Yeah. There's like a four three something. There's a new one in LA. It's like a four two four. Yeah. I call bullshit. Oh, that's yeah, not yeah. interested, bro. Mm-mm. Yeah, I block this, all those. But this is called Sunshine. I dress like this as an as a kid <laughs> in the eighties and I'm all about positive LA vibes right now. I'm trying to help my city because I feel like yes. it's in disarray, bro. Like there's the homeless problem is just rampant and dude yeah. we went to to rodeo drive. <laughs> I don't know why it's rodeo is rodeo. There's two. There's a rodeo and a rodeo. Mm-hmm. Wait, what? Yeah. Well it depends if you're north or south of Beverly, right? Yeah, I'm the kidding. the rodeo is in like what? Culver City. It's like oh, Culver City towards Inglewood. Oh, and it's called rodeo. It's called rodeo. And then there's a rodeo in Beverly. Oh, well why is it rodeo? It's French? It could Probably. be French, yeah. <laughs> anyway, it was really scary. It was like a, it was a weird ghost town. It was very weird. Yeah, it it, it L A is has real weird vibes, like you said yeah. right now. You grew That's up in the weird. valley. I did, homie. Yeah, so I did. I grew up. I grew up just north of the valley in like Newbury Park and Thousand yeah. Oaks. So yeah, back and and back in the day, that was nothing out there. There was like nothing. It was a like a cow pasture yeah. out there. But uh, for a while. You know, LA and SoCal in like the late '90s, early 2000s, we were hot. We were yeah. the ticket. Yeah. And now everyone shits on us. Yeah. Everyone wants to leave. I bought a house a hundred feet away from the biggest homeless encampment. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding. No, I mean it's it, it, and it and during it was, Corona. He did. during Corona. Oh no! Millions of dollars. Um, no. no. I backed out. I backed out. I had to. It's a long story. It's a long, depressing story, which I'll have on my own podcast. Coming. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what happened? What? Where did we go wrong? What the fuck? Why are people leaving? I think the big the, the when the first one is there's what is it a six to eight billion dollar deficit that was caused from this whole thing, and then yeah. there's they gave homeless people certain rights that you couldn't touch their property or their person to move them. So right. instead of there, they just put up porta potties <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. next to squatter. So that's why you see it trickle. It used to just be in Skid Row and then it seems to be trickling into suburban areas because yeah. they gave them essentially like, you know, more rights because I think the woke culture, <laughs> I think we're trying to make everybody and it's good. I think the intent is good. I just don't know if that's the way to do it. I don't it, know. It's tough because you. I have compassion and I want them to like have access to things and like I I understand that there's a lot of people out there that are um that didn't choose that for themselves and like they're mentally ill. Right, but also Most. whatever we're doing now is not working. yeah, it's not it's not working. I don't know how to pl- like walk that line. It's it's weird. Yeah. So you're moving to Kentucky. You were saying so, that that's the new yeah. Place. yeah. <laughs> Kentucky's to, a place for a people. brown man Back to like his me. people. Yeah. Is that where you're from? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure. You go to Kentucky, you see a lot of guys like me. Big nose, it's... last name Gariba, a lot of Gariba. Garibas have a-, a Huge We're Gariba rooted. <laughs> the Kentucky, Kentucky Garibas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's just sad because I have a lot of, I, 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 I was born overseas, but like I grew up in Southern California and I have so much pride and affinity for Southern California, and it's like eroding every yeah, day. I know. It's eroding. I also feel like this whole Corona experience has really forced people to kind of really sit with shit. Like we're so used to having distractions and this really sit with everything. I don't know about you, but I, I feel like it hit me over the head one day where I was like, I just want to be happy. Yeah. I just yeah. want like, and, and I just feel like this town feels like it's lost its way a little bit. And then you also realize 
that you can do what we do anywhere. I mean, yeah. you can, 75% of the work I've done in the last couple of years hasn't even been in LA. Right. So, you know, it's kind of like, what am I killing myself to keep up with this certain life here or anything? And then you think about your kids. I mean, look, you can say good and bad about every place, but you know, you just start to reevaluate stuff, I think, in times like this. Yeah, what are you gonna do, Rob? I, listen, I, if it was up to me, I would never leave New York City my entire <laughs> life because I just I feel so at home there and I love it and it makes me happy. And like every block I walk up, it's like, oh, that's where like Pat kicked him in the teeth. You know, like there are all these different like there's all these little spots where like every when I'm in a cab, it's just like these memories flooding in of like, oh, when I was six, this or when I was 12, or this like your first this and that. And so it's for me, I don't feel at home so for me it's like new york city and everywhere else so i don't yeah. care where, if i'm not in new york city i don't care where i am i know i feel that way about you know la and then there's everywhere else because I'm, I'm the same way i'm oriented through different places like that's the liquor store my dad would take me to every day after school and like that's the carl's yeah. jr we had dinner at every night yeah <laughs> there's a hot dog place i would get my dinner from too like <laughs> Uh, yeah. Even Gelson's. I have, like, affinities for salad bars. Oh, their dressing is so good. Thank you. Which one's yeah. your favorite? The balsamic, Gelson's. the creamy balsamic vinaigrette? I don't, I don't even know balsamic. <laughs> it's very creamy. It's very creamy and Have thick. you tried their ranch? No. <laughs> it's the best. Ranch is more of a dipping thing for me than a salad thing. Wow. It, it, You're just it, blowing my mind. See, I, I don't like I, ranch at all. I, what? I mean, I like dr I basically have dressing with a side of salad. Like I like yeah, yeah, a yeah. lot, but ranch overpowers it. But I'll I'll dip in a ranch all day. So you're a balsamic vinaigrette, but like I like a creamy balsamic. A vinaigrette. creamy, which yeah. is and what do you put on your salad? So I do a lot of sweet green. I do the balsamic vinaigrette too. It's the best. Yeah, it's the greatest. It must be an East Coast thing in you. Well, I, I grew up as a ranch a ranchman. Oh, yeah. I, okay. I mean, yeah. Interesting. But, <laughs> well, you know what's funny? Something. I can't. <laughs> when I remember the first time I ever tried so disgusting balsamic <laughs> vinaigrette was that because listen. Oh, I like this. Pack. We all this might be on the bingo card, but I grew up fucking poor, you know. So, but then <laughs> all of a sudden at thirteen, we're flying first class to L.A. Mm -hmm. thanks to HBO. And I remember sitting in the in first class, and they're like, "What would you like for your your meal?" And I was like, "Uh," and I just answered. I was like so uncomfortable yeah. that I'm just like, "Yeah, whatever." Like a standard, you know? Like, I, she's like, "What dressing would you like for your uh, salad?" And I'm like, "I had never eaten a salad in my life." Salt? You know? Are you serious? Like, At thirteen? No, no, no way. I was chicken fingers, French yeah, fries, yeah. burgers. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I would eat chicken fingers every day still if I could, but. Um, I so balsamic so she's like yeah we have a balsamic vinaigrette and in my head salad is so gross no matter what she puts on it's all the same you know at the time yeah. I'm like yeah sure like that I remember putting a piece of lettuce in my mouth and gagging like I was like that I was like that's a spoiled or like something is wrong because I never tasted like vinegar it's like it's soury yeah yeah and now I f love it once you get addicted because it's that like yes. barbecue it, it kind of hurts your mouth a little yes. yeah yeah like salt and vinegar chips <laughs> I you, like you get that yeah I enjoy I remember that flight by the way Rob and I flew with our moms and we made our moms sit together and him and I sat together because it was both our first time in first class and Regis Feldman was behind us I still have the picture of Rob and I with Regis <laughs> <laughs> I heard he uh, Howard was talking about Regis they yeah. lived in the same building building and nicest that's what nicest. he said that he so was nice. always like howard i saw you on tv the other day you were on the mac has got talent or whatever the yeah. fucking dumb show is yeah. that's so cool did you yeah. feel like you were like the princess of show business at that no moment? I, like, I always still to this day like yeah. such an imposter. no you have a real attitude i know <laughs> <laughs> no just be like how do i get here hope nobody <laughs> figures it out <laughs> kicks me out Wow. No, Rob, 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 Rob's presence always kept it real in the best way. Meaning, just we, we, anytime we were meaning to do something fancy, it would either we would be HBO flew us to LA for an award show once it wasn't even happening. We showed up at the place and they're like, "Yeah, that happened last month or something." They're like, "Are you here for the magic show?" Yeah. And we were in, I was in a tuxedo. I was like, "No, I'm not." Who would I, I be? They flew like, us first class with our parents and in a hotel for a non-existent award show. And oh then you know God. what you know what story you would fucking love. So <laughs> they flew a bunch of times. We did like kids shows until Jamie turned eighteen and she left me. And she became hot metal. Legal. I remember. Yeah. I did Maxim and then. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. We were all paying attention. <laughs> the uh, so we get flown out to this like child's thing and 
this children's award and yeah, it was always game, like dude. the guys from like seventh heaven or like whoever and they're oh. all in the front and they have like the you know the blonde hair and they're so like look at Jamie's, she's losing it Jamie's dude. drooling <laughs> I think she spit on me <laughs> but you guys are like the cool kids stars well that's what you're happened on the coolest fucking show in the so, world so they sit us all the way in the back right and and we're like we can't hear anything so now we start fucking around like I'm outside smoking cigarettes and shit 13 wait yeah. how old are you then and, and all these kids are like looking at us like whoa like like what's up with these guys and we're just like fuck this place like even our parents are like this is weird you know like yeah. they know and so we're all the way in the back did and you say play... it was in like a barn <laughs> it was like some weird shit. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, okay, now, next we have, and me and her are talking and laughing. We're clearly like rude. And they're like, and it's probably 90% it's best, me. The and they're like, uh, now for this moment of whatever. And they show this Asian girl on a, on a <laughs> giant screen. And she's, I don't want to, I don't want to, I'm not going to go that crazy and do like what, do my impression of what <laughs> she was saying. Do, Asian lady. No, but it was like, it was a <laughs> whole bunch of like, you know, we don't know. She's talking in like Cantonese. I don't know what she's speaking. <laughs> and so everybody, it's, you could hear a fucking pin drop. And all of a sudden, me and Jamie get the giggles. And we start oh. laughing. And by the way, I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm like, yeah, I'm laughing. She feels so bad oh my God. that she's laughing. Like, no one can give me the giggles like this one. At the award shows, when they show like the in memorial, she would cry. Aww. That's how nice she is. And now we're laughing, right? So, like, it's awkward, whatever, but. We're laughing at this thing and we have the giggles and it's dead silent <laughs> except for the two of us laughing. We find out this woman was telling a story of being like separated from her, ch <laughs> from, her from her children and they were like taken away by the Gestapo. Oh, or, like, I, don't Gestapo. Know, I don't know who or what was going on. But it this, was bad. This it was like a really tragic story. Yeah, then she's like, you but see her like there. on the fence, like like crying. Yeah, and they're like oh. honoring her at this point. And me and her, me and her are like, ah! <laughs> we're like what the hell is this garbage you know oh like send God. us back to New York <laughs> we gotta get that footage That's yeah so, but how did everybody else know what this woman was talking about because like, we just didn't even they, try they and, like, we just weren't <laughs> trained well at that point yeah like they were probably listening before they show the video and me and her were just like is that bread free you yeah. know like trying to <laughs> Hey guys, we were so excited about our pod this week. We forgot to promote our guest. It's the one and only The Christina P. You can follow her on Instagram at, at The Christina P. She is the host of Your Mom's House and Where My Mom's At. She's an amazing comedian, human friend of ours. We love her. Uh, check it out. Well, this episode is brought to you by our friends over at Braddock. And listen closely because right now they have a special offer exclusively for our listeners. Wearing masks. It's what we do now. And where can we find affordable, reusable ones that we don't hate putting on? Our friends over at Braddock have solved their problem with the daily face covers and scarves. You guys, they are the most comfortable, breathable, affordable face masks available. They are made right here in Los Angeles. Uh, upcycled t-shirt, jersey material. Throw them in the washing machine with your clothes. Super soft, eco-friendly. Fully stocked factory here in LA, thinking about everyone's health and needs. 100% um, satisfaction guaranteed. We can vouch for it. We love it. Look mm -hmm. at all their colors and designs. I just found out tie dye is back in style. And you so just they, found that out? Yeah, well, you know, like mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. And uh, they have a, a, an incredible selection of tie dye. I have many of them. I keep them in each car. Yep. I keep one by my keys. Okay, you have more than one car. <laughs> yeah. I do. I have a couple cars. So uh, thanks, Braddock. And then when I get my next one, I'll put one in there too. All right. Well, when you go check out their website at BraddockUSA.com, you will see they already have great prices, but for a limited time, they are offering an additional 20% off with promo code PJPants. Again, that's 20% off your entire order with promo code PJPants at B R A D D O C K U S A dot com, BraddockUSA.com, promo code PJPants. You got to wear a mask, people. Yeah. That's what they say. I think Kasim came up with a good slogan for their company when he said Braddock with that double D. Double D. You're right. That's a great That's a great little line, babe. Yeah, it's Braddock with that double D. That is the best, though. I really, I love disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I kind of do. Like, it's, it's that was, that yeah. was funny. Like, it's never going to have such a negative. Like, no one's going to die because you guys were giggling in no, church. You're but right. yeah. there was this one time. I studied, okay, I was studying at Oxford University of mm -hmm. Philosophy, and there was, uh, we were listening to this lecture of this very prominent 
medieval philosopher. Big fucking deal. Like this guy's talking about the ontological argument for God. Da, 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 da. Anyway, sitting next to me is my friend from Tennessee. And this guy says he's from the Melungeon Mountains. I don't even know if that's true. <laughs> yeah. He's like this really smart backwards guy. And he's real gummy. Like he's just a weird dude. And he go <laughs> in the middle of this lecture, everybody's silent. And he leans over and he goes, hey. <laughs> he goes, hey, Christina. You dare me to fart? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, dude. Fuck yeah, dude. And this guy, and it was plastic seats. Oh. This guy, Ooh. he just rips. Yeah. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> and like, you, like I, at that moment, I knew who was cool in this program and who wasn't, like by who was right, laughing around right. us. Yeah. And pe some people weren't laughing. And I was like, how do you not laugh at a guy, some hillbilly farting in the middle of like, a big lecture at Oxford University. How can you not laugh at a fart in general? In general, I agree. That will be Jack. My youngest son will be, <laughs> that will be Jack. Farting uh, in the a guy lecture. farting, yeah. Yes. Wait, Hands what? Down. What do you mean? He's oh, Chris Farley. That's, that's, his, yeah. that's, his, that's, his, that's his future. Yeah, she, same, yeah. She has a two-year-old Chris Farley in her house. Yeah. No, like his hair is just oddly stands <laughs> up. Like, like he... The other day, I was trying to get him to say like, "Cause I'm living in a van," <laughs> and he would like repeat me, but I have to like do it in two word increments. Aww. Yeah, he's he's, he's Frank a stout little boy. That's adorable. He's got bigger calves than I do. Oh, <laughs> just for a, sure. He's just, just a, a strong trunk. foundation. A yeah, that's good though. You want him strong and meaty and cannonbally. That's you what he is. Want, exactly what he is. You don't want some fucking fay kid. You no, know what I mean? he is as solid as they come. That's what you want. He weighs yeah. as much as your seven year old. Yeah, That's like two great. pounds less. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what's funny? After I did, uh, after we did your mom's house, Kasim texts me like a day later and he's like, Are they Polly? <laughs> oh, I got, and bye. I read some. Yeah, that's yeah, what I said. Bye. Yeah, I read some message. I was like, "Yeah, they're swingers, dude." They're yeah. like, "These guys, they fuck around." <laughs> and I was like, "Be further." So I, at first, I'm like, "Yeah, they're bi. They're they're all they're they're trans age. You know, they're all of it." <laughs> but then after, I was like, "No, no, no, they're they're not." And he's like, "No, they are." Like he's, he's telling me, I'm like, "No, dude, I'm telling you." Like I listen, they're just fucking around. He's like, "No, they said it on Rogan. Like they're full on. They're, they're poly." Yeah, so I wanted to talk to you about. How you, guys, uh, how you do it. Well, yeah. it's tough when you have a two and a four-year-old. How do you choose someone <laughs> to bring them into the bedroom? Yeah. Well, like I said, besides having two small children, we yeah. are horny. <laughs> <laughs> there's not, right? At the end of the day, there's nothing more we want to do. Nothing more. Fuck yeah. other people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, we don't. Uh, God, that would be great. I don't even know how people have the energy to be poly. Like, it's really no. out of sure laziness that Tom and I are monogamous. Like, yeah. how do you. So much effort to manage that many people's feelings. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm too lazy. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. Even to date would be horrible. Or like, I watched Jamie I with her two kids, and I can't imagine being like, put him to bed soon. Our girlfriend's coming. <laughs> like she'll be, she get the kid to clean up the yeah. thing. You know, like quick I, feed him, grab a funnel. Yeah, put him to bed. Well, even people that are into like uh, fetishes and complicated sexualities, I'm always like, I, I ain't got no time for that None. shit. None. Like yeah, like I'm into bondage and dressing up like a dog. Like I find it fascinating. But no way. Yeah. Or, I just are you into stick that? it in? Yes, and just in out, in out, and then <laughs> watch Ninety Day Fiance. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So no, are I'm you a plain. Into... I'm a plain Jane. You yeah. Know? I am uh, as straightforward as they come. I know I look like I know my way around a puss. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, no, I I I don't have it in me. I don't know if it's insecurity or security. This whole thing with the the guy who likes to watch his wife fuck. Uh, That's crazy. Yeah, it's yeah, cuckold. Yeah. That's insane. I couldn't, right? I couldn't oh, imagine that. It's called cuckold. Yeah, who's. Yeah. So Cutter would watch you yeah. get railed by some dude. Yeah. And not only that. A big black. What, a BBC, a big black cock. What you guys, oh, like, your oh. whole sex life is based on, like, even when you're having sex at home, he's like, yeah, next week, you know, Timmy's going to fuck the shit out of you. And you're like, yeah, yeah I can't. I'm going to I'm gonna gag on his big. <laughs> yeah, like, that's you your are. whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's they love insane. to ruminate and talk but about it. By the it. way, when I see girls <laughs> getting choked, it's the same feeling I have. Is I'm like, I do everything in my life to avoid <laughs> Yeah. That scenario. The same yeah. thing with like walking in on someone fucking my girlfriend. I'd be like, I do every like I'm I'm in the gym. I'm nice to you because I don't want to walk in on you fucking <laughs> right. someone. Where right. like your whole thing is like, man, I hope I get home tonight. She's just getting the shit fucked out of her. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. I, like we we play, <laughs> we play this clip, this woman on TikTok and she's like, my poly people, don't uh, you just love it? when your husband has a new girlfriend 
And, you know, you're waking up and his phone is lighting up and he's getting all these texts from his new girlfriend and you're just so happy. Oh. That NRE. <laughs> <laughs> that new relationship energy. Yeah. And oh my like, gosh. It, yeah. yeah. Like, could you imagine if Cutter was getting text messages from another, like that? I've like, I've like rage. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, if that was a cartoon, I'd be like filling up with the color maroon right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's offensive to poly people. Yeah. Contain it. I'm not mean to be offensive. <laughs> Contain, Contain it. Contain that shit. Yeah. Jamie, apologize to all the poly I'm people sorry, out there. Sorry, poly people. <laughs> poly <You're> people. Poly <laughs> people. <laughs> You're polyphobic. You know, I am. You're poly. I'm so polyphobic. But it wouldn't turn you on, huh? No, it no. made me ill, physically ill to watch that one. Correct. Woman. Like it made my stomach hurt because we watched it last week, remember? And I was like, oh, I can't even. What's Doctor Drew say about all that? Yeah. Um, he's well. Listen, as a guy who has been with the same woman for thirty years, married, Passionate and man. gets a lot of BJ's, bruh. Would you two to four me? a week? I'm gonna have Susan back in his wife and give sex tips to us married ladies Great. about. Can this. I come? Yeah, you want to? Yes. Come on, bro. Please. You're in it. Great. Um. <laughs> I think he thinks it's a waste of energy, and it's like just put that energy towards something You're... productive. Oh, like, I like this. What are you? That's I don't know what he would say. I'm, I'm theoretically, I don't know. I feel like it's a waste of energy. <laughs> Did you listen to Love Line as a kid growing up here? I mean, uh, yeah. Remember every time somebody would call in and be like, "Yeah, we thought it'd be a good idea to do a threesome." Yep. And, and he'd be like, "Say no more. It's not working out." <laughs> they're, they're like, "Yeah, it wasn't a good idea." Like girl robbed us and like yeah. <laughs> I'm actually oh tied gosh. up and I uh, got an STD. I mean it yeah. never ended disaster. In a, yeah, yeah. I mean that that put me straight. That show like made me do a lot of or stay away from doing a lot of things. Mm. Yeah, and STDs and stuff cuz yeah, listening yeah. to K-Rock was it Love Line with Sunday Nights or mm. that was Rodney on the Rock. Did you ever listen to Rodney? Re I listened to clips of Rodney on Kevin and the Bean and that yeah. was enough. Yeah. yeah the bean. Just, uh, it's not the, I think it's just bean. Yeah. Uh, I think he dropped the, <laughs> the bean. Okay. Show some respect. Well, I didn't say Kevin and the bean. Yes, uh, you did. Here's his gaslighting. <laughs> we call oh, okay. it gaslighting. No, no. He if just totally wow. tells you things. Wow. That, oh, it's crazy. Kevin and Bean. Wow. That's funny. The uh so when wow. I was <laughs> the bean. I was like twenty two years old and going out seven nights a week and just doing coke every night. Yeah. Like every fucking night. And I'm at this club. And uh, the owner says to me, my friend, he's like, oh, you want to go see something? Which means like you want to go do coke in the office because he's the owner, <laughs> you know? So, so I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, let's go. Right. So we walk like behind this curtain. He opens it up and there's like a flight of stairs. So we're just, we're talking like we're going to do coke, you know? So we're like, yeah, whatever. So then all of a sudden we, he opens his door. We go into another room and it's like red. And we're walking up another flight of stairs and you're fucked up. So you're not thinking about it. Yeah. I think about it now. But uh, so then we go to like a new room and there, you know, those like beads that hang from the thing and then yeah. you part the, and you're in another room. So we part the stuff and then all of a sudden he like turns to us and he like folds his arms and he's looking at us. And there's these like little 1970s TVs all over the room. And we look and I'm like, oh, shit, that's playing porn. Like I'm like, there's there's porn. <laughs> so on it. And I'm like, this guy is this guy going to try and fuck? Up? And I look and there's people fucking <gasps> like over there i turn around people there's people fucking <gasps> all around us what he what? and he's like and, and he's showing it like how your two-year-old shows you things and he's like <laughs> <laughs> what do you think yeah. and, and let me tell you great? something in the movies it's nicole kidman and fucking tom cruise in real life it's yes. robert paul champagne yeah. and someone yeah. who needs a lease and a key yes. like these people are <laughs> so unattractive and you look and i remember even then before i had ocd i remember looking at the couch and like they're, they're like ripped and there's stuffing uh, coming out of it and everything is just dirty it smells like a locker room and i remember uh, like looking at my boy and my my, my buddy was kind of like all right like what's going cool. on here and i remember like it <laughs> smells it's so dark and the main thing was Everyone is so unattractive. Yes. Oh Everyone's gosh. naked. Yes. And then. Do they pay to go this is in real there? Life, Rob. I don't understand. I have no idea. But we the, have to I fuck need too. more information. The craziest part is no one even looks up. Like there's three people <laughs> just standing in the middle of the room. Like, I, I, like I'm all fucking coked up and I'm looking around and, and they don't even flip. They're just like bang. Other people are banging this. And I was like, wow, this is like. And by the way, in Dark. a public place, like in a back room of like a very 
popular like i was like this is wait fucking where it's a back room of like a restaurant like a chinese a, a restaurant? club a, just like a nightclub yeah like you like we were partying everything's good yeah so and he's like crazy. hey like you want you want to go do it and we're like yeah sure like you know he's like, you want to go see something and then all of a sudden we're in this like fuck den not bad huh <laughs> Did he wow. want to fuck you? Do you think? No, yeah. no. But he was like, we like he's one of those dudes who had like a big necklace, you know. Like those are like those swinging type people, you know. Like where yeah. it was like chains. Yeah, like like, uh. the, but like it was the necklace is just a piece of rope, but then like the thing on it yeah. is like Always a, it's like a Down it's like a here. crystal, you yeah. know, or like something. It's like fuck yeah, you gotta keep your crystals close. <laughs> Isn't yeah. it? I know because the fantasy seems so much cooler because in your mind you're like right. i'd love an orgy like that'd be so rad dude yeah and then it, it, the reality of it is what you just said like fat fucking ugly people uglier than me like i don't want to see myself naked and jiggly and you know and then <laughs> like oh, one time i went to hedonism in jamaica <laughs> as part of a road rules challenge i did the only one i ever fucking did <laughs> and they took us there and like it was so gnarly because people were just naked in like bondage le leashes and chains at the buffet getting their like salad and their balsamic and they're like this is my slave this is my owner <laughs> and then effing and like the jacuzzi it was so disgusting and it's not hot it's not like no. yeah actor you know what i mean it was like not... see jamie's acting like she's shocked but yeah, bryce have you done bryce we know the truth <laughs> jamie has started a new business and she wants to keep it under wrap but I'm not gonna let her so Bryce if you would please what is this okay thank you for calling hey how's it going doing well do you by chance have a manager there I can speak to sure let's see well, my name is Dave we're out here in and we run a distribution and manufacturing center for adult toys okay and we've recently created a new product. And you know, after doing some research online, it seems that fuck sleeves are a booming. <laughs> okay. So we found our best vagina in the biz and made a fuck sleeve. Can I stop you right there? But you know, she's here right now, the adult <laughs> actress. Her name's Jamie. I'm going to put her on the phone. She can tell you a little bit more about our product. I've been huh? found. Hey, babe. Hey, how's it going? So it looks like the biggest flashlight you've ever seen. But where are you? And when you twist it off, there's a fleshy colored, squishy <laughs> vagina. Oh, wow. Move your hands. It's very realistic looking. People like to fuck my vagina. Oh, do you do indoor parties? Um, um. <laughs> Let us see your yep. face, Jamie. I love being yeah. dominated, whipping, <laughs> and like using tools. Tools? I like my man to take charge. Tools? Like a, like a screwdriver? Um, okay, yeah, sure. Oh, wow, I wasn't expecting that. You have no idea. Usually sex needs to be in my ass. In her ass? <laughs> you think we can do this tonight? What, a screwdriver in your ass? Yes. Wow, yeah, of course. Oh, man, that's only like a three hour drive from here. Oh, oh yeah. I like <laughs> fucking cat poo poo. Oh, what, 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 what was that? Oh, I don't do blowjobs. Oh, okay. Oh. Just anal sex. Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, this is turning into something. Oh, yeah. It's a real connection here. I like to throw up in my vagina. <laughs> what? I'm fucking rich. I've got my own shit. I've got my own money. I'm cool. Whoa. People that are rich usually don't talk like that. Why? Shame on you, sir. You are a disgrace to your family. Mm, okay. Jamie, what do you have to say for yourself? Wait, was that a legit prank? <laughs> That's you is took that the an ambient and you made a call. So that, that is Jambian. <laughs> that is for sure Jambian. That is Fart Simpson. The great Fart uh, Simpson. Oh my god. Yeah. That was awesome. The greatest prank caller in the game, bro. Oh yeah. my god. He's on Instagram, fart underscore Simpson <laughs> underscore prank that? call. I wish you'd talk about He made like that. that. That takes so much work. <laughs> yeah. That wow. Was well he reached done. out. He <laughs> said, I wanna I wanna make a prank call. He of reached Jamie. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Gosh. Oh yeah! I feel honored. I you do. Dirty bitch. <laughs> you dirty bitch. Yeah. I like your oh my cat god! Poop. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I like fucking cat poo poo. I think you. <laughs> my yes. favorite is when fart just does like the reactions, where she's like, uh huh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> some shit. Yeah. That was uh, amazing. I cannot. I you know so I've been good. I've been holding that for three weeks. Have you really? <laughs> because yeah, because we're waiting for Christina to come on, and I'm like I can't. Every day I'm sitting here while we're doing the pod, and I'm like I just I just want to I just want to. By let the way, it. my head was going. I'm like this was a lot of work that Bryce and Robert did. Like oh, I no. thought you guys did this. It's all fart. Oh my God! Wow! You wow! I think honored. Cutter's gonna be real turned on. Later. I can't wait <laughs> to play that. that for Cutter. He's gonna be like, James, is that you? <laughs> We're gonna play it for Sunday on Bo's birthday. Yeah. Oh, for great! Cutter. Perfect for my seven-year-old. <laughs> yeah. Did you talk about a fuck sleeve at some point? Like, yeah. On, we, oh, uh, yeah. They brought why. him for me because I didn't know what it uh, was. I have a whole box. Oh yeah, you told me that. That's yeah, yeah. You have a whole box. Do you use? Got that? a whole box. Well, they sent me a box, and uh, I've only um, flashlight. Oh and yeah, I've only used a couple. There's o- there's only <laughs> one company that makes them. Well, no, no, there's many, mm-hmm. but there's one premier company. Okay. That's... But like you know how we were talking about how Jamie finds the good in everything. Yes. So we show her the fuck sleeve, <laughs> and she's like so disgusted, but she goes, "Oh my god, whose signature is that?" And there's like the signature of whose <laughs> vagina it is on there. Yeah. She's like, "What a beautiful yep. signature! That is it so." Was. Like, she's she's really just... nice handwriting. <laughs> she's just so nice, Too you know. Nice. She's looking at this vagina, <laughs> trying not yeah. to throw up, and then she's. That's you know, why it's so it shocking to hear you talk like that. It was a baby vagina. <laughs> yeah. I know. I didn't know I could be so dirty. Uh, if that turns you on, send us an email. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know I, if you want to get those. Uh, wait, wait, so have you ever swung or, or been in a an orgy never. or a setting? Never. Like that, yeah. Never been in a threesome. No, never been neither. with anyone other than my person, I guess. Wait, your poly person? <laughs> your, <laughs> your person? No, my person. Your cutter. I have oh, a good oh, friend. Like, yeah, I have a good friend that was in a <clears throat> poly relationship in the sense that she was with this guy for a really long time and they felt like they were life partners, but like the sex started to fizzle out and they both kind of started cheating at the same time and confessed to each other at the same time. And then we're like, okay, well, let's just do this. And so they had other relationships on the side, but then it got messy because on his side, the girl was married. Mm. So then it, it got really messy, but it was, I, I, I kept saying more than anything, like, you must be so tired to deal with <laughs> yeah. two men. That's a lot. Yeah, I'm not into it. I'm not into it. She couldn't explain it when she was in it. She was like, I can't explain how this happened, but it just is working right now. Do See, they have kids? Mm-mm. That's why. Mm-mm. That's why. I think it's bored energy when you're looking for that I'm outside making... zing. Like you just want, I think you just want attention. Yeah. Yeah. Right. When I was when I did threesomes when I was younger, you did. Oh yeah, oh, I, mean, I was shit. like Mister Party. I was going out seven nights a week in New York. Drugs, uh, you know, shit just happens. But and they're like, oh my god, you have and the Sopranos. Were you Always there? two girls. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not doing a bunch of do- <laughs> well. One time I did a thing where it was like there were like nine people in the room and and things were just going crazy. But <laughs> but mainly when and I didn't like it. But when I did threesomes i felt like the primal thing about sex went away for me and it became like a like your analytical mind comes in oh. of like okay if you're doing that well let's hold on if we stand like this where when it's like sex it's just two people fucking yeah. you're not th- you're not so much thinking about you know and then if it's just the two you're like where's the other yeah you don't per- want the other one to dry up and i don't want the other one also like looking at my butthole <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean oh. like i don't want to be in a position where it's like oh my buttholes in your face you're a little and then, more uh, vulnerable yeah and you're you just I, like i didn't like thinking about it you know it's, yeah uh, you're more vulnerable <laughs> <laughs> jamie automatically sympathizes you know, i know empathizes. she's so sweet yeah. you okay yeah. After girls? were you all right after your threesome <laughs> Were your feelings met and heard? Were you fit? were you seen? <laughs> I was all right, Jane. Thanks for asking. You're welcome. How many have you had? Yeah, uh, a lot. A few. No, not a lot, but you know. Was it like? Did you consider that a good experience? Like, would you do that again? Because uh, I just didn't. Were you listening or? <laughs> no, like, but if you did it, but if you did it a bunch of times. No, but it was just fucking on drugs. drugs, and you're probably yeah. all of a sudden like there's there's you know you're back at your apartment. There's two girls, and I'm not gonna be like, oh, excuse me, would you mind seeing yourself out? I'm <laughs> going to make love to your friend. Was, you know, like it was I got just... locked out of a like me and my buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the I'm the guy. I me and my buddy were at a, a bar, and then we and he's a good looking guy, and then yeah. there were these two girls that were like roommates or something, and he started chatting him up, and then like I was kind of talking to the other one, but they're like, yeah, what do you guys want to do? Like, let's go back to your place. I was like, oh, cool, yeah, like you guys come to my apartment, it's real close, and uh, bring him back to my apartment, and I go take a piss, 
they're in my room, all three of them. My door's locked. <gasps> no. Yeah. Oh. And I was like, instead of just taking the hint, I'm, I started knocking no. and be like, oh, oh my you God, guys. This the, is like from a Judd Apatow movie. The, the door's <laughs> locked. It has to be. <laughs> so embarrassing. You guys, this door's locked. You probably just. <laughs> Made a mistake. Yeah, yeah, I don't have the key, but if one of you wants to, and then you just like hear, put your ear to the thing, and you just hear uh, like, uh, you know, and oh like, oh, God. and I'm like, Jack, dude, don't do this to me. Oh, <laughs> oh that is so. That's why you're so. Bad. I just outed my buddy Jack. Was he yeah. a white guy? He is a white. Is guy. that why you're so angry at white people? <laughs> yeah, well, many other reasons. Is that yeah. what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right, you guys have been putting there. me down for a long time. <laughs> um, so that's my threesome story. I wow. never did one. I I think I'd be too self conscious. I'm self conscious with one person, you know. Yeah, but alcohol alcohol does make it go away. Yeah, <laughs> and know? and if I was like 22 year old. Yeah. Drugs, alcohol. And it's also how much like the girls when Easier. the girls are like really into it. Like you're like yeah. No, I would. <laughs> my head would go crazy. Yeah. I'd be like, her boobs are better than mine. Yeah, are you yeah. Looking yeah. at her longer than me. Like uh-huh. what? Like, I would go crazy. But what about if yeah. it was two dudes on you? Yeah. No. No one. Oh. Yeah. You hear that, guys? That? You're gonna just have to get the fuck sleeve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not gonna be able to fuck a real puss. Nope. Yeah. Two I'm guys taking. is too much. Too so much we dick. we love too uh, much dick. <laughs> uh, dating on the spectrum, right? Such a good show. Netflix. So you guys I, haven't seen it yet, right? Oh, li- only a little bit. I haven't finished it. Oh no. man. It's, it's so the good. autistic dating show. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's like you're like the Grinch, you know, but but your heart grows bigger. <laughs> but when, don't you, you wish you could it could be like that, where you'd be like, I don't like how you're eating no, right now. I am oh, like okay, that. I'm sorry. Yeah. I feel we like, are like that, Jamie. Yes. <laughs> you're you keep it in your head. You're right. <laughs> we really say we're like, oh, yeah. you're you know. That's so healthy. I don't Isn't think it? so. Because I've asked no, our... it's just because we can't take it. I think it's very healthy. Well, Tom's like, he's had to tell me on numerous occasions. He's like, you can't mask your feelings. Like if I meet someone I like I don't like him, he's like, fucking just try to pretend like you like this person. I'm like, I do. Like I'm not trying trying to be rude. I think I have autism. I think we're on the spectrum a little. Listen, I've said it before, but I feel when you say it, people feel like you're making fun of things or like and it's the same thing with the show. Like people think you're making fun of the show and you watch it and you're like, no, I feel I for like the, it. Like, yeah. yeah. And so much. I'm like, yeah, dude. Like, why can't like I'm like, there's 90 percent of me that's like, you guys are doing this right. I we are nice. doing it right. Like, like they're like. How come you don't want to go on a date? And I'm like, I hate lying. And they're like, you don't have to lie. I'm like, no, when I want to leave five minutes in, I have to lie. Because I have to to pretend like I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Your boss said what? (laughs) Like, oh, that's so. Yeah, he sounds like an asshole. And I'm like, I just want to go. Right. Because, you know, pretty quickly if it's not a chemistry match with someone. Right. They're like, oh, this this isn't working. (laughs) You're like, yeah, dude. Like, you just just get up and go. And they're like, fuck yeah. Yeah, I'm overloaded. What I really liked was their their likes and dislikes. Where he's like, I like the. <laughs> Look, that's what I want to know. That's yeah. that's the note I put down. I yeah. want to know. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so like, they autistic people have very specific likes and dislikes. Mm-hmm. So you won't be like, I like sunsets. I like long walks on the beach. You're like, I fucking hate. Um, I hate the sound of nails rubbing on carpet. I love the smell <laughs> of dog breath. Um, In the, the sound morning. of sirens make me anxious. Like yeah. you have really specific, I don't eat crust on bread. And <laughs> But I feel like those are the things that marriages and good relationships are made of when you two share a common sensibility. Yes. Like do you both fucking hate Starbucks and you only go here, you know, or you mm-hmm. fuck Dunkin' Donuts and all that stuff is imperative. So, okay, wait. What are yours? What are yours? Well, I, I want to know, like, from all of us, what would... Uh, but, uh, you know, going with the theme of the show, I would immediately say, I'm not doing two and two. I want to do four dislikes. Like, I don't want to yeah. do two likes and two dislikes. Uh-huh. I just want to rattle off dislikes because I don't <laughs> like, uh, you know, whatever. But so, like, you know, for yeah. that show, I would definitely be like, when somebody tries to take your jacket at a restaurant. Oh. Drives me. I agree. When somebody, oh. like, and they're like, would you... I'm like, what... I, like, that's my shit. Like, uh, when you go to a hotel and they want to take your bags. I'm like, I just, 3,000 miles, yeah. I took these bags. And now yeah. you're going to take them in the elevator? <laughs> like, and it's my shit. Like, I don't want you, I don't like people <laughs> taking my shit. And then I'm like, where's, I'm in the room. I'm like, where's my bag? I agree. Yeah. I fuck, I'm getting angry. I know. You know, I, <laughs> he, I feel you. I, yeah. I don't even like nurses taking my baby. Like, remember when you first have a baby and they're like, we're taking, I'm like, no, you're not. You're going to fucking stand right yeah. here. I don't want you taking, I agree. Don't take my fucking jacket. I don't need help with any of that stuff. I hate it. Yeah. I don't, you want me to take your jacket? Why would I? Like, I know there's a coat check too. Like, you know, like, I yeah. can't. Yo, this one makes me crazy. When you're at like the Starbucks or the McDonald's and the person in four, when they order, they go, yeah, um, I need a, I need a uh. egg McMuffin. I need a, 
Yeah. Give me a, can I get a? And I'm like, no, 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 There's, it, that's a person. And you say, yeah. may I please have? Yes. May I please have? Yes. Not, I need a, oh, you need a fucking cheeseburger right now. <laughs> it's a fucking imperative for your life. Like that, that enrages me. Yes. I, I, I never say Talk no to, to fans, but I do hate when someone's like, oh, you need to come meet my, my, my cousins <laughs> over there. Like you need to come. And then I'm like walking like, through no, I don't. somewhere <laughs> to go meet I your need. cousin. And then, and then the, my favorite thing in the world, like I hate it at the moment, but now I love it is when the person they're introducing me to doesn't <laughs> give a fuck. Yeah. Like, they, and they're like, or when they're, someone tries to explain like, you don't, you don't know? Like, he's from Sopranos. And then I'm like, oh, hi. Oh. hi. Like, yeah. And then they start, no, I've never seen Sopranos. So oh, it's the best. Like, this dude in Jersey, like right? He has a fan. You're fucking worth to have someone talk to you. <laughs> yeah. Oh and then I'm, I'm, I'm standing there and they're describing That's the show so to yeah. me that I didn't watch. Also, so I'm like, I didn't, I don't want to hear it to begin. And, you know, and they're describing the plot of Sopranos to their friend. And their friend hears the plot and then is like, oh, yeah, that's not, <laughs> I don't even want to watch that. You know, like, they're like, I don't care. Oh. I yeah, yeah, that's oh embarrassing. God. When that There's one person's dislike. in you and the that other is. one's not, <clears throat> doesn't give a shit. That's that feels good. And they're trying to convince the other one to be into you. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, like, no, you would the coolest. Oh, you, no. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. So wait, when you were getting into threesomes and stuff, were the girls like? Oh my God, AJ! And then would they make you say lines? From no, the show no, no, or? no. Luckily, when I was, th when I was like. 22 there were no 22 year old girls who were like i love sopranos <laughs> you know true. it's not like like i, I can't yeah, imagine these like true. nickelodeon kids <laughs> and they're like oh my god can you say like he's in the back like you know or like what like they he's don't in the back and it, it, that's that's it, your life. yeah and it's actually it's actually bet yeah you know did i do that you know <laughs> it's actually better because their friends would just like they would just hear i was on like the best tv yeah. show in the world they didn't know like my character was an annoying pussy or like like, or that, like, you know, I might, not, like, they didn't know anything. They just knew, like, oh, he's on Sopranos. Sopranos is the best. <laughs> cool. Like, let's right, party. Right, right. I did love your suicide attempt episode. Thank that you. That was yeah. really good. It was, uh, yeah, it was a sad. Was I not sad supposed day. to say that? People have seen the show. We did get an email uh, about we got a spoiler. We got one for about that exact right. thing. Someone was like, can you say when you, and he lost it. He was like, it's been 12 years. Yeah, you, you should know? say 20. 20. Yeah. What are you 20, doing? Yeah. I don't like it. And to answer your question <laughs> yeah. about, what we do and don't like. What's your don'ts? I yeah. just, I have to say, if, if you're dating someone and they don't speak to anyone like in the service industry with any sort of respect, it's- Fuck out of here. Yes. It's fucking done. Yeah, But the, we, I wouldn't even make it to to, to the, I, you would no. you'd pick that up before. I can't imagine someone being rude. But also when I was in New York, I was dating all waitresses, you know? So <laughs> they were never rude to- Right. It's it's just like it gives you a key into so much about that person, how they were raised, what they think is okay, mm -hmm. like how how they yes, yeah. perceive their like level versus. Other. I mean, it's that's what's great about you. Most of you guys here, I feel like <laughs> you're great. Uh, no, no, I you're you're celebrities, but you're real people, and you have like real respect, and you meet people who are the yeah, can I get a and you know you meet mm. those kind of people, and it's such a it's such a huge bummer. Yeah, There's so well, because I know I'm I I'm one of them. That's me. You know what you I mean? You think you're like, one of those people? Well, I, I no, I'm saying That's like, rude? like the person who's bringing me a fucking cheeseburger. I'm like, dude, I got real lucky. But yeah. I'm, I'm you. If, if oh, yeah, I, yeah, by, yeah. by the way, I'm not even you. I wouldn't. This would be too good for me. You know, <laughs> right. like this restaurant's. This is a twelve dollar burger. You're very grateful <laughs> to, of your position mm -hmm. in life. You know, you're just. I, I. Yeah. You sent us an email or like a text the other day. And I didn't even think it was from him. I thought it was from Jamie. But he was like, guys, I just like I was woke I woke up last night, I was laying in bed. I just like I'm so grateful for you guys Aww. and your friendship. And I was like, oh Jamie, I feel the same way about you. And then he, then I looked, it said Rob. I was like, oh shit, Rob. <laughs> it's a very Jamie thing that yeah. that he said. No. But meaning it was nice. Yeah, yeah. It was like a nice <laughs> thing. But it's he 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 spends a lot of time being grateful for such a young, small, angry person that on yeah. the show. He's he's very uh, happy in where he's at, mm -hmm. and I don't think he'll ever find anyone because <laughs> no one's no what? one. What? I don't think anyone is going to be able true. to. I don't think they're fantastic. I he always does this. It's build me up no, to no. tear me yes. down. It's his. It's That's his thing. That, I, that yeah, gaslighting. That was, that was a, I got to keep him constant. Up. It's I constant. Just, you ha you have. You're so you're gonna happy. be so grateful alone forever. That's what he's saying. <laughs> Thanks, Cass. I know you talk about how happy you are, and I see it. Like no one's ever gonna be good enough for you. Right. Yeah. You're exactly. so grateful for your yeah, life. Sure. No one's good enough for Robbie. Well, what about Jamie? I feel like do you have any sweet, sweet lady friends like you? 
you know, I I hold Rob to like a very different bar. So I'm I'm I haven't found anyone that I've wanted to set him up with really yet. Wow. But yeah. also she hangs out with a lot of moms. Yeah, yeah. You know? that. And I also don't really want to date someone who drinks because it's right. That's I haven't a- drank in like seven years. And if and the thing is girls always say like I just have like a glass of wine or two and I'm like, oh, cool. And then at the end of our first date, they're hammered, <laughs> like in the middle of the street, like yelling. And I'm like, I, I, you said you had one drink. I also I mean, women my age and this is no, nothing against it, but I just think, you know, women that are about 40 that are single. Oh, I would never date someone 40. Well, well, do, <laughs> what but, are you crazy? Well, but... <laughs> Cass, what is she nuts? Uh, 40 anyway, I would laugh I've dated dead. a 45 year old yeah. well, women in their 30s I'm Rose. kidding yeah of 40s. course any age <laughs> I don't want anyone to put any pressure on him and 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 oh, right, so right. it's like I understand where the woman's at where she's ready for a stage in her life like I totally get that but I don't but Rob I think he needs to like slowly find his way and the only person I think he could do that is with, is with a woman that's kind of in that same space. I think you're right. You know what I mean? That's he, kind of like let's let's see what happened and that's really hard to find. Hmm. Do you agree? He needs to look in a or comedy Or do you need world. someone that's like going to kick you in the butt a little? Uh, you know, for me, the main thing is I need somebody who is their own person. Yeah. Like I, you've also been alone for a long time and that's really hard to break out of. That's, that's a, it would be a real drastic change for you to have to consider somebody else's time. For sure. Especially mm. because only 10% of the people I know who are in relationships are happy. So Mm. I look at the other 90% and I'm like, well, I could be, like, I could be getting my, I could change everything to get to that. Like, you know, and I'm like, oh, that doesn't seem fun but then i do see you and your husband have a great relationship jamie uh uh joey our friend joey perino and his wife it's like the that's like, next uh, level yeah that's i'm like, like if that's i that's unattainable that's they what i fight yeah they've what? only had they're when married people are like, they've we only don't had curse two fights each other i'm like that's weird what that's so weird what do you mean how yeah. do you speak then that's weird yeah i don't trust people that don't curse period yeah no. how often can you Super fight weird. in a marriage before like it you realize there's a problem Sure. I think you know my therapist always says that if the intimacy when the intimacy starts to suffer is the real first sign that a relationship is sex. You is, mean yes? Yeah, I agree. Is, That's is the indicator. Problems. Yeah, because you can Fighting, argue but still fuck yeah. and be okay. So I I was given in journey space. Wow. Um, these four questions. Which for people <clears throat> not from LA, <laughs> can you tell what right. that is? Yeah. So journey is, you know, like ayahuasca journeys. But so I was given by the, my wonderful teachers these four questions that say I'm dead sober. This is not meant to do when you're, you know, in the other world. But you ask the, your, of yourselves these four questions as a couple and the other person is not allowed to respond when you answer. Okay. So the four questions are, is there anything you want to say? So you'll sit across from Tom and you'll say what you want to say. Then the next one is, is there anything you don't want to say? And then you'll answer that. And he can't respond. And when you can't respond, you are forced to literally Mm. swallow the other person's answer. And you almost like you have to see where they're coming from. And then the other one is, is there anything you want to acknowledge me for? So you'll acknowledge him for something. And then there is there anything you want to be acknowledged for? And then you'll say what you feel like you need to be acknowledged for or that you're not being acknowledged for. And it's really a cool <laughs> conversation because Cutter and I Cutter and I are like bicker. I mean, we've done it in front of you guys. You see us. I mean, yeah, like we're, yeah, we have very a very natural. natural but but like we check in with those sometimes because I feel like you can get lost in the hubbub of life. And when you have those questions to come back to, whether it's once a month or whatever, it's kind of like, OK, That's I see good. what you're dealing with. I see where you're at. I've got you. And it just reminds you of like. Yeah, you are my partner in this. Thank you. Thank you for because all we need to be it doesn't nothing needs to be said. Sometimes you just need to be heard yeah. and just know that that was like you're un, you're understood. You can still disagree with me, but you you get where I'm coming from. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. Well, and also I actually in, in my marriage I've been with Tommy for 15 years. I think too a lot of it is saying stuff. And then a lot of it is shutting the fuck up mm-hmm. about a lot of stuff, too. Mm-hmm. It's more like, do I really need to bust this guy's balls about this one? And like, yeah, letting I, I let so many more things, quote, slide. He's not doing anything wrong. He's just being Tommy. And I've known the guy for 15 years. So, like, he's always going to do this certain behavior. There's always going to be underwear on the floor. There's always going to be whiskers <laughs> of his beard in the sink. Yeah. Like, there's always going to be dishes left. Like, that's just what's going to happen, mm-hmm. bro. So either you outsource the problem. Yep. 
or you shut the fuck up mm-hmm. and let the guy be who he is. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's what, I think that's what I learned. Like you just let that person be who they are in that's the marriage. It. That's a, such a huge part. Let them be yeah. who they are next to you. Yeah. yeah. It probably helps when you love who they are. It does help. Yeah, because I know people yeah. who have been married who they they hate each other. <laughs> Uh, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And you're like, you're like, yeah. wow, that's that's interesting. Yeah, you but know, why, like, they, why do you marry someone you hate? I always wonder that. What the? It's it, I, what I think is because I think you're you're comfortable in that instead of finding somebody who might try and open you up and really like d- discover all these. But like, you're mm-hmm. just like, oh, I fucking hate that. So like, whatever they say, you can dismiss it. You can just always yeah. kind of put them in that box of like, ugh, you know, like like I know people who literally think of their significant other as like, ugh, like when you say <laughs> that they and they like. So, but they think that love uh, deep down is like, you know, like, uh, just uh, knowing uh, yeah, someone, like, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll listen, I'd kill someone for you, okay? Like, I, I want us to get, but it's like, I th- it has to probably do with how love was in the home you grew up 100%. in, A hundred percent. Yeah. Well, because like, my parents divorced, but then my mother's second marriage to my stepdad, he was a criminal, and she helped him do, like, these crimes. Cool. <laughs> and it was weird because, oddly enough, it was a great marriage because my mother was this nutty borderline and he was a, psy- a psychopath. And the two of them together, I mean, they would sit at the breakfast table and high-five each other and conspire and laugh. And they treated each other like best friends. So I don't know what their sex life really was, you know, whatever. Yeah. But I saw that and I was like, oh, that's fucking cool. Like, everything else is dog shit around this. Mm-hmm. But... That works for that. I like that thing of yeah. friendship and like high fiving your partner and being like, "That's really funny, dude." Or yeah, like yeah. whatever. Yeah, conspiring together if you can. Yeah, is great. Yeah, maybe we have to find you like an AA chick. I feel like you need like a. Would you kill yourself with a spiritual chick? No, no, no I'd be cool with that. But I also like the AA thing. I just don't want some girl who's like, "Yeah, I used to suck dick for coke," and like you know, because I'm just like, uh, they're because I'm a little bit of like a germaphobe. <laughs> And, and I would just you sometimes think those germs my, are still lingering around. That's there? more of a cocaine's anonymous, but yeah, I see what you're saying. There's a lot. Some of the best dudes I know are in AA, like yeah. rehabilitated, just like have had the opportunity to like figure out what the fuck is wrong with them and like address it. A lot of people walk around outside. They have all this shit that's going on with them, but since they're like they don't have a problem, they don't drink too much. They never gets addressed. They don't do therapy. They don't do that. I have a question though. Is that you? Because you just said you're like I have a lot of great guys out of a coming out of AA where you could say like this guy just you know lost his way or had this issue but he's a great guy it's very rarely said about women though hmm. well that's why I was proposing to him I, I want an AA chick I want Ugh. I want a, here's my here's my I want a girl that does yoga for you yeah 100% right and yeah. she wakes up at 5am remember that girl used to bring over my house that did yoga she was so uh, yeah. cute what's her fucking name edit that out Gabby <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Right, but like, okay. <laughs> what if some girl she wakes up at like five a.m. Doesn't have to be your thing. You don't have to wake up at five a.m. But she's up. She's doing her fucking yoga. She makes you a smoothie, and she's like, "Rob, let's go for a walk before breakfast." Well, I'm first of all, I would smack the smoothie off the counter because I'm intermittent fasting. So <laughs> yeah. she clearly doesn't listen. <laughs> Stupid bitch. Yeah. Sugar what the fuck is this? <laughs> now clean that up. Uh, no, no, no. I, I'd be cool with that. Like if 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 we she walked our imaginary dog before I even got up, or like did Bro. all these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, she, I, and you guys talk about your spiritual journey, your journeys together. Mm-hmm. And but like, uh, like I said, the most important thing is that the girl can exist without me. Like my biggest f- mm-hmm. problems when I was dating before was. Like a girl would be like, oh, it's, you know, Rebecca's birthday tonight. And I'm like, I just, I, I don't want to go and be in. And that would start the biggest fight. Oh, yeah, yeah, And I'm like, yeah, no, yeah. you need to be able to do. Yeah, like, but you sometimes you got to ma- do that. And I do it. I but that's what I'm saying. If it's like, it's literally like maybe one out of five to one out of ten times where I'm like, I just don't want to go. Right. To, and they would never understand. <laughs> See, that's an issue with Cutter and I. Because I'll be like, go, and he won't go without me. So can I tell you something? Uh. I think, again, I don't want to I don't want to make, you know, t- talk about like celebrity or this, but I think when you're someone who has had some kind of fame, there's always somebody at the party who like is a fan of Sopranos uh. and heard you're going to be there and then goes up to them and is like, oh, where's your boyfriend? Sure. And then she has to deal with the like, oh, like he he, he didn't want to come tonight. Like, I think there's some of that in there, you know, mm-hmm. where like people oh, right. or they're like, oh, how come he's not here? And also, I think girls a lot of time when the guy's not there, like maybe 
girls have to deal with like is everything okay like you know are you guys right. yeah. are you guys all yeah, right yeah, yeah, where it's yeah. like yeah we're just two different people yeah like and he doesn't even know you yeah yeah, yeah. you know i don't know rebecca well, cutter's thing is he just hates going anywhere and he hates talking to people me too and so yeah. the idea of going somewhere without me like he doesn't want to go and then if he's gonna go without me then that's just not fair and the thing is, it's wow. usually a bar. He doesn't ask much of me. I will say that. And I'm like, I already don't want to go there. Now there's going to be drunk people. I just, <laughs> babe, right. I don't want to go. That's true. It's and- not your environment. And that, that girl wouldn't understand. Because I, Tom and I have that real fucking honesty thing of like, I, I never made him do my family get togethers. When mm. my family comes over, he's got full permission to hide or fuck <laughs> off or yeah. go away. I'm like, dude, yeah. I get it. My family sucks. Go. Like, you just have to find a girl that gets it. Like, yeah. I don't want to fucking drink, so I don't want to go to your dumb friend's bar. Because I'm 10 out, of, 10 out of 10. If I'm like, hey, babe, uh, Bob, like, it's Casman's birthday tonight. She's like, I don't want to go. I'd be like, all right, love you. Fuck like, that there's, cunt. Yeah, there's zero. Come to my birthday. There's zero part of me that's like, you, you know, like, oh, you're, you're not going to go? And I and because. Yeah, I'm that way too. And it's hard for me to understand that that's even, like, valid. <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm like, you don't need me. They are like, you've been to a million parties without me. Right. Why are we fighting over this one? Yeah, but that's because we're autistic. You and I have <laughs> yeah, You need someone on the spectrum. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You might. Well, I'm going to do Dating on the Spectrum season two, and he's going to do Indian matchmaking season two, and it's <gasps> going right. to be perfect. I love it. Oh my are you God. Indian? <laughs> well, you guys are going to be gone for so long. I'm just going to go on YME. Every you got to come. Please. Six well, days. I love place. it. Six days you need max. to come on our compound and start being around more people every day to get yeah. you ready to date. Listen, I'm done. And that's the thing. Uh, our last guest on the podcast was like, what's your ideal situation of meeting somebody? Because I haven't been on a date in a long time, and the idea of going on a date especially Oof. covid not drinking it's so horrible and the yeah. fact that every day i'm like i'm happy and they're like hey you want to go do this thing you you really don't want to do i'm like no you know like i don't <laughs> uh, dating sounds terrible dating's terrible it's so bad and that's it's just it's and it's terrible. expensive so that's the thing he's like what would your ideal situation be it's and i'm like the, the best situation would be like hey we're having a barbecue and there's going to be yeah. girls yes there, but yes. it's fucking covid also so right. no one's like hey there's there's 10 girls in my backyard who are just looking to fuck you know <laughs> like it's like everybody's or people or i get on the app for 24 hours and I, i'm sick to my stomach mm. like, you know I what i think it. about dating again because i don't drink i used to lean on the drink so hard on the on the date where you transition from like we're outside now we're at somebody's house and it's yeah. like you know it's easy when you're drinking to like make that that move that first move but when you're not it's just like yep yeah, you seen this show on Netflix? You, you ever go through the thumbnails on Netflix and just go, have you seen that? That one's good. I can't get into the sexy bit. And then oh, that, that thought yeah. of going out and like dating again all over sober is just so, so daunting. Sorry. See, I don't mind that. It's like the three hour dinner where I have to listen to stuff mm. that, that bothers so me. Sorry. I don't, well, once we're, <laughs> so once sorry. once our lips touch, I'm, I, I show up. Kyle I'm and there. I never went on dates. <laughs> really? How never at a friend's that? house. How do I figure that uh, out? We were just, and we were like just around each it. other a bunch of com- <laughs> a couple of days and we're flirting and flirting and flirting. And then it was just like, we found ourselves alone and made out. And then he was leaving to go play baseball for th- in three weeks. So there was like no games to be played. So I was like, what are you doing tomorrow? Cool. You want to sleep over? Like, let's do it. And we just hung out every day for a couple of weeks. Without he's like, any... yeah, I just have to ask my mom if it's okay. Because <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's 19 at the time. No, I got my SATs 22. in the morning. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, you man. know, hmm. are you strictly banging no condom now? Because you Or no, any kind of, you got the... Not yet, bro. He's only on load number three. He's got to oh. bang out. Oh, yeah. he got snipped. He got snip? the snip, bro. Nice. It's so exciting. I think he resents me secretly. You do? Well, he's... <laughs> He's been <laughs> writing violent sketches yeah. lately. Oh, shit. The same I sentence won't... over and over and over. Yeah, <laughs> it's like he's like, babe. I'm coming in that puss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's different. It's like he's been writing sketches where he like uh, kills women and stabs them and then. <gasps> oh. <laughs> yeah, so it's heavy. Yeah, cool. It's heavy. And I'm like, babe, babe, everyone sees this. Like, our, like yeah, he shared the sketch with a few of our f- the friends and they were all like, you okay? Like, yeah. are, you, are you angry? Uh, Jamie has saved but, a girl before. If you need help, just I let have, you could write. Jamie what saved a girl from being raped. What? When? The same girl yeah. who has a flesh light. Can you believe it? Yeah. 
<laughs> what a nut. What a kook. I was in a hotel in <laughs> Florida and I heard something happening next door, <gasps> like a scuffle. And I went out in the hallway and there was all these people just standing there frozen. And there was this bloody hand trying to get out the door. So I kicked the door back and just grabbed her and brought her in my room and called the police. Oh, uh, my You ruined someone's God. master plan. <laughs> yeah, he was. He has. He was like wanted for identity theft and like had all these different passports and stuff. Yeah. What city? Miami. Were you like, yeah, get your bloody hand out of here? Yeah, oh, for sure. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Miami is so crazy. That yeah, that's terrible. She was, like, she was a runaway and was living in a hostel. And this guy promised her a job, and he brought her back to her room, and it happened to be the next door, and that's what happened. Jeez. And then she ended up getting adopted by the cop that was working on it, and she went and enlisted in the army. Yeah, she she wrote me letters for a little while. It was sweet. Wow. Every one of Jamie's stories end like this. See, I'm not talking to anyone I've met in the last 20 years. And Jamie's <laughs> right. like, yeah, well, we, we set up an adoption yeah. plan. <laughs> you know, everything just, yeah. it's all full circle in love. I do with that part. That woman, uh -huh. Kamala Harris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Well, we before we go, do you want to yeah. bring that thing yeah. up? Oh, yeah. I have a surprise because um, we we're going to do this as like the 50th episode, but this is our 51st and it's almost our year oh, anniversary. Congratulations. So I have friends that made Thanks. a thing. That's awesome. Thanks, mommy. <laughs> no problem, Jeans. <laughs> this is so exciting and amazing, you guys. Look, so, so here's fun. some uh, oh, cookies. Wow. And they're pajama pants cookies. This is from my friends Chris picture. and Brittany. They have a- Wait, don't touch them. Yeah, yeah, Wonderful. I won't touch. They have an Instagram called uh, Sugar and Splinters because they do woodworking. Wow. And cookies. So That's amazing. Yeah. Thank What's you, guys. That? This is a pajama pant. Oh, so duh. great. Those are not balls. Oh, you thought they were nuts? No, I didn't. <laughs> I knew it was a drawstring. You're always a horny. Out. She's so horny. <laughs> <laughs> that that guy's slutty dream. Good. She's trying to like pull the, Just the like waistband me. out. I'm so sexually even charged. Even a few times in my life that I was slutty, I feel like even the guy was like, yeah, that's not you. <laughs> yeah, Jamie's... I know. I, I feel like I have uh, serious lesbian vibes. Like, Hell yeah. <laughs> I feel like I have mannish vibes, but, but I attract a certain type of guy. Like after shows, no, yeah. Guys are, yeah, certain men are like, fucking love you. you can punch me in the nuts. And <laughs> I'm like, okay. Well, one time Jamie even asked me for a guy's number, and I was like, no. You know, I did? Like, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you, remember you made out with the guy in his hotel room, and then you were like, the oh, next Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And terrible. you were like, can I get yeah, his number? Like I was like, no. You were like angry at me. You were like, no. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no. Because he was banging like every chick in New York at the time. I and you're like, give me his number. Because I know, like, I know exactly what happened. It was like, how forward of me? Who the fuck was I? It was like 9 18 at night, meaning Jamie had one glass of wine and was hammered. Oh, hammered. And was like, can hammered. I get his number? And I was like, no. Because I, I, I know what's oh, going on. Just no. Yeah. So I, I, a piece of, look, it matches your shirt. I'm on a ketogenic oh, diet. Shit. Yeah, me too. I can't. Are you on a ketogenic pretend. diet? I just, every day. Are you I, really? I only eat once a day. Dude, I just started it a week ago. I'm already down two pounds, bro. Nice. Congrats. And I'm you always look amazing. so angry and hungry all the time. But I'm going to look great in like a month. What does that mean? A lot of protein? Yeah. Low carb. Low carb. High yeah. fat. High fat. It's suck. But it's going to be good in a while. I still got to drop some baby weight, homie. You See, my, my diet is I eat one giant disgusting meal a day yeah i used to and do that too insane like they start <laughs> you guys should come over one sunday bring the boys we do sunday at my house i would love it we got the pool the, the barbecue swim, the smoker and you can see rob eat for an hour and a half straight standing <laughs> at my kitchen island it's yeah. really something amazing it's, this, it's the same area where jamie takes ayahuasca and poops and i like Shut to stand up. right there because it just makes me feel comfortable in a weird way wait i used to do this diet i would eat once in the middle of the day and i would eat like a tuna melt onion ring sunday because you can't have all your calories in one meal and then i just wouldn't eat again until like mm -hmm. the next day and it fucking works and not only does it work but here's the thing <laughs> when you're dieting there's nothing to look forward to where like yeah if at 1 a.m i'm like i'm hungry i'm like you know what tomorrow i'm gonna fuck shit up <laughs> so i have that in my head whereas if you're on a diet and you're like man i'm starving you're like well six days from now i could have a spoon of almond butter i like, know it's it like sucks. fuck that every day fuck. i just pig out i kind of do intermittent fasting but like i eat I eat from like twelve thirty to like eight thirty. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. really but good. But I eat in those eight hours though. Yeah. But like, you don't eat a lot. Like you're yeah. not doing what he's doing. I eat a lot at night. I eat all my shit at night. And then you just don't eat during the but day. But compared to someone like me, you don't even eat. 
Like when you see the way I eat, it's Rob's like very impressive. It's the talk of the I'm house like, when Rob, I'm eating. Rob, do you want an avocado? He's like, oh sure. I set <laughs> yeah, my I phone timer. I turn the timer on. Yeah, and I, and I see how long, and I'm averaging out. I have a. I'll chart be like and doing, doing dishes, and I'm like, are you done? He's like, no. Yeah, she's it's putting like, the kids to bed. I'm still at the fucking counter, just stand. They're like, do you want to sit? I'm like, no. Mm. <laughs> he noise. has to like you make several trips. I, I want to. I'm serious. Yay. I do because I, I like to do Sunday feasts too. I yeah. do Sunday yeah. treats. I believe that Sunday is the Lord's day. You should not do, do commerce. Don't do work. Just eat and relax. You guys should come That's this Sunday. We, uh, we have our. Let me see. My aunt from Louisiana. What you know? Oh, you love you love those Southern. I love I being I from be Kentucky. To. It's yeah, Bo's she's birthday. gonna be making gumbo. It's a, okay. a seven year old's birthday. Red beans I can and do rice. It. I think I can do it. Let me check with Tommy. Okay. I'm, I'm throwing so more meat. Excited. Are we're you getting coming? even more meat. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. sorry, yeah. Rob. That's right. It was your week too. No, no, no. Right. We're gonna have what everything. You, you got no, no, no. Rob's bringing all the meat. Yeah, I'm bringing. I got steaks, burgers, chicken. Oh we shit. Do the whole I'll get you keto bring. covered. That that is keto. That's that's fine. keto. Yeah. yeah. Avocados. Okay. Avocados. I've got. Should yeah. I bring alcohol. Oh, not for you. Of course. Yeah. Bring it. Yeah. Well, we've got plenty of party. You do. Yeah. Get shit so Or we'll, we'll relapse this yeah. weekend. It'll Me and Kasim watch the kids. Oh, you're it'll sober a, too? Yeah, it'll be a great weekend to just fall off. All right. Yeah, sure. yeah. If I was going to do it with anyone, yeah. I'd yeah. want it to be you, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy I ruined your sobriety. Yeah, it's only been seven years. Who's? <laughs> I wasn't even counting anyway. That would be really an yeah. honor. Who needs those silly chips? Wait, Let's do it right this time. I can't believe you've done ayahuasca. Like, I feel mm-hmm. like... Of all the people in this room, I would be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Kasim's yeah. on it right now, probably. Yeah. yeah. Look what I know. You so said I've you only done about one pure ayahuasca, and that was a number of years ago in Peru. In, no, in LA. <laughs> okay. Better? So it was like a pop up shaman, you know. But it, and it was dark. It was impactful, but dark. What I have done since is more gentle experience where they mix it with mushrooms and other plants, and every journey that I've done has been completely different. Mm. Um, All very positive and all amazing, but different. And it's never what you think it's gonna be. Mm. And it's just been really, it's been a really cool thing to do with Cutter. Mm. Oh, you do it together. Mm -hmm. We've done it with different couples and different friends of ours, and we've done it alone. And it's, it's, it's like, you know, in therapy, you can intellectualize yes. trauma and you can talk your way through it. <sighs> but in plant with plant medicine, you f- literally feel it. Which is the whole way you heal is exactly. by feeling stuff. Exactly. I don't like to feel feels. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. And you're forced to. And it's. Yeah. But it's you can witness it. Do you know what I mean? Yes, you're not yes. completely consumed by it. You witness it. You see it. You you. But then you can kind of let it go. Wow. It's really... Can you describe what it's like right when it hits? Because I like when you talk about... <laughs> so the first thing is kind of like this heart opener. And it's you just... you're Basically, you have a feeling like you're melting. And you... And the ego is just completely removed. That all of a sudden you look around and you're like... Oh, you feel... You just feel love. Like you're so connected. You, you don't feel separate. You just... Just all of those stories that we tell ourselves are kind of removed. And it's just this even playing field where... You can say and feel anything and it's okay. Mm. And you get, I I get like, I like to call them like these hits and like they're just, it's just truth bombs. And then it's about the integration later of really, that's where the real work is, is integrating it into your life and, and understanding. And that's why it's nice to do it with people and people you, you are close with or people that you can talk to a lot because that you can remind each other like, no, dude, that was real. Like that was that now your your ego's coming in or now you're having this narration coming in, but no, that was real. Like we can we can still go with that. And I don't know, call me hippy dippy, but I just I see things pop up in my life and things change every time I do it. And you know, if if it's real or not, it's it's making life better and easier for me. And oh, I, I think it. it's real. If it's if it's helping you, it's real. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter. And yeah, that whole well ego said. lifting. Well, I saw a documentary on Netflix and you know that's where you're, you know, that's it's truth. And they're talking about that about uh is it was it psilocybin? Yeah. 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 Uh that's what it does. It literally yeah. removes the ego so you're able to heal. The brain mm-hmm. can like communicate. Yeah, new neuropathways are yeah. are being opened. That's how you feel on Molly too. Like there's no, you don't understand like if you hear about somebody doing something bad, you're like, why? Like, well, you don't here's even the thing: the, the, you know? this, what the facilitator said is the difference between this and a bunch of teenagers taking Molly at a club is we're here with an intention. 
Mm. So they can feel all that oh, love and thus, but they, they don't necessarily have an intention for their evening. But when you when you sit in a space and you, you go in with an intention and people are there to support that intention, it's just really cool. And it's also been really cool as a couple for us to kind of look away from each other and deal with our own shit and realize that the other person is okay. So then when you kind of look back, you have like more room for yourself and to see the other person. Wow, I wonder if Tom would ever do this with me. It sounds, <gasps> I, wait, but hold on, there's a massive puke factor. Not one time. What? There's, they boil it past the purging point. So there's, it's mi- it's chocolate form. So it's mixed with. Um, I don't get diarrhea and I don't barf. See, the first 20 mm. times we did this podcast, I felt like I was melting, but it was just George <laughs> and Bryce trying to save money on air conditioning. Mm. They were trying to they were trying That's, to what, that's what I did to Jack, and he got turned away from school. See, it never works out. Mm. I wish they had a sober, like a sober version of that. Mm. You know? CBD? Like no, you CBD could, doesn't do shit. Take yeah. a bunch of paprika or something, and then like, yeah. you know, you, you get the same sort of effect. The CBD but... um, sleep serum that Therabody, my husband's, husband's company has, is you gives you the craziest dreams. Well, when oh. I say it doesn't do shit, I just mean it's not psychoactive. It it works. CBD works. I'm yeah. just saying it doesn't. It doesn't. You're not like whoa. You're not you know, there's nothing. No, no, mm. no, no. But I've done I've done it all, and I can tell you, there's there's some things to be seen. The only thing I haven't done, like ayahuasca and DMT. DMT sounds crazy. Yeah, I've I've never done that. I would. I well, that's what that. ayahuasca is essentially. Right, but DMT takes you to like another. You have no universe. control. See, in this one, you mm. have you have complete control. You can like see the doors open and you can literally choose whether you want to go there or not. Oh wow. Ayahuasca is like fucking takes you. I want to talk to aliens. For the fucking dude. Ride. I want to talk to the beings. Oh, wow. Well. All right. Well, we're going to let Christina get out of here. Thank you so oh, so much. Christina, so uh, nice having so you. Much You're the for main coming. mommy now. You got to no. come back. You guys have to come back and maybe one day you too. Your uh, fans your, oh, your fans were oh. so- I never read comments on the internet, it. but your fans were so positive that I was like, I could scroll through this motherfucker and it's yeah, all good. Yeah. They you guys so... have a really great fan base. They're amazing. Yeah. And I have to say, though, when people come on the show who appreciate YMH and know the show, it's 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 a blessing in the skies, as mm. we all say, because your genes are high and tight, not low and loose. There you go. Yeah. And they can smell a low and loose gene a mile away. <laughs> they, that's what they've been saying about, they've been saying, keep your pajama pants low and loose. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they've been insulting me this whole time? No! <laughs> well, pajama pants should be low and loose. Yeah, yeah. comfortable. Sure. Right. Jeans are always high and tight. The higher, the tighter, the better oh, yeah. they feel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This was so much fun. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. you for having me, you guys, yes. and congratulations. Yeah, one year. Yeah, that's right. We've been doing this for a year, huh? Just Pretty started much. working. 